sign in if you have it. 30 minutes till the first ballet of the evening. Justin Peck's Paz de La Jolla. thinking about it being like a full turn. It really should be more like... Okay, so the first one I'll do and the second one, no. Yeah. We want it to sit more like that. No. Bring them down through and then around. No. You have to lift her up and lift her down, yeah. not just lift her up. There's this disconnect between what's happening here and you're kind of this kid. You know, I mean, it's cool. Stop! We need to do that again. Like you 10 go. How far do we push a story with the light? Now oh, this side? That side. It's really important to play with like a lot of energy and vigor. So you've just seen the trailer, but I'll still give you a little bit of an intro to uh, both the creator and the star of Ballet 422. Uh, Justin Peck is a soloist at New York City Ballet, and he's also the company's second ever choreographer in residence. He has collaborated in his work with artists ranging from Sufjan Stevens to Shepard Ferry, and he's made works for companies including Miami City Ballet and LA Dance Project. At New York City Ballet, he's made seven works already, and he has a premiere coming up this week on February 4th, uh, set to Aaron Copeland's Rodeo score. Uh, Jody Lipes, who has a very extensive resume that I will try not to mess up, um, you have seen his work as a director on HBO's Girls, um, and he's also done a dance film before, the fantastic uh, New, York expert, New York export opus jazz which I would highly recommend watching and which was broadcast on PBS a while ago. Uh, and as a cinematographer, he's worked on films including Martha, Marcy, Mae Marlene, and Tiny Furniture. So to start off, you guys, uh, Jody, when did it occur to you that this would even be a good subject for a documentary? And were you more interested just purely in the process of making a ballet or in Justin himself? Or was it a little bit of both? Um, well, I was in a, a situation a little bit like this, um, where Justin was getting interviewed by my wife, and I was just really fascinated by how he handled that, and then also as part of that uh, demonstration, I got to see Justin working with Tyler Peck, who's one of the principal dancers at New York City Ballet, and just the way he talked to her was really surprising and interesting to me, and he seemed a lot older than he was, creatively speaking. Um, so that's sort of what drew me in is Justin as an artist and Justin as a person. And then the fact that it was ballet that he was making, I think it was sort of a secondary thing to me. Mm -hmm. And that was, the ballet he was working on was Paz de la Hoya? No, it was, it was actually um, Year of the Rabbit, um, which was the ballet he did prior. Yeah. Okay. I should have mentioned that the ballet that we see Justin making in the film is called Paz de la Hoya and it's his third ballet for the company at the time. Uh, so Justin, were you immediately sold on the idea of having cameras follow you around, or was this something you had to kind of come around to? Um, I think it worked out well because I, I kind of knew Jody a little bit through Ellen, and uh, I was familiar with some of his work, and I was a fan, and um, so I thought, you know, maybe I'd be comfortable having him in the studio following me around um, shooting. Uh, and it turned out that he had a very quiet presence in the studio, and I almost didn't notice him 
you know, filming at all. And then when he came to me a few months later and he was like, hey, I made a feature length documentary. I was like, when did you do that? Like, I had no recollection of it. So, um, so it worked out well. Mm -hmm. So speaking of quiet, this is actually, this strikes you as you're watching the movie that it's a very private process for a choreographer until the dancers come in. Um, and you also made the decision not to have voiceover in the film. Was that kind of a conversation between the two of you uh, to not have narration and have Justin's voice until we hear it, I think, about 20 minutes in? Um, no, I think it just turned out that the story could be told that way. You know, I think, um, you know, a, a talking head interview a lot of the time is like information, and I feel like because what we're shooting is dance, um, a lot of the story is just told physically. Mm -hmm. um, and then also because there's this sort of built-in ticking clock of like the, of the premiere is a month away, it's two weeks away, it's a week away, that there's kind of that like driving narrative force just of time. So you don't need to like explain it, it's just there and it's just, just happening. Um, and yeah, and I think, I don't know, we didn't really talk about it, we just sort of shot it, yeah. Mm -hmm. And that was totally fine with you. Yeah, that was, I, you know, I, I kind of appreciated that because it, it forced Jody to give the most honest depiction of the process of making a ballet since all he had to work with was the footage and, um, you know, there was no one sort of giving their opinion on what was going on, no talking heads. Um, so I appreciated that. Were, you've made documentary before, that's more of a sort of verite approach. Um, were there any challenges that came up that you didn't expect in terms of following an artist's process and not just in his everyday life? Um, no, I mean, you know, New York City Ballet is a old institution which is, you know, very established and has their way of doing things, which works very well. And so, like, for example, shooting a performance is a difficult thing to do because obviously, like, the priority during a performance is the performance. It's not me shooting the performance. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of restrictions that get placed on you in those circumstances, but at the same time, that's what sort of leads to interesting solutions. So it turned out to be, like, really a blessing that that was one of the limitations that we faced. Mm -hmm. It occurred to me, I mean, was there ever a day that you were just expecting to be totally routine when like some kind of breakthrough happened for you, Justin, or that turned out to be really momentous? Breakthrough moment on that Jody captured? Yeah. Um, or that you were surprised to see afterwards, like, oh, that's when I had that idea. I think that there were definitely kind of moments in the development of the choreography that I think we're shown off really well through the filmmaking and especially like there's one scene where uh, you know it shows me seeing the choreography on stage for the first time and for me that's a completely different uh, uh, I guess kind of vantage point for me to view my own choreography because the process of making a ballet really starts in the studio and there's no depth to what I'm looking at so I think a big uh, a big step in that process is going is taking the, the choreographic material and moving it from the studio onto the stage and having the ability to step away and look at it from a distance and um, and I think that shift is really clearly depicted in the film. Mm -hmm. um, when you saw the film for the first time, both of you, Justin, what were you surprised by in terms of seeing yourself work from this sort of outside viewpoint? Um, I think I was surprised by how quiet I am in the film. I think that it comes across that way, uh, but for me, there's so much internal thought and almost like dialogue going on in my head at every moment um, that there never seems to be like a still moment, but I think like looking from the outside in, there's a lot of um, shots of me very like pensive and quiet and um, almost like inanimate for uh, bits of time and um, so it's just like, you know, different perceptions and, um, and also just, I think it was weird to see me on, on screen just because of, uh, I felt like I looked kind of like this young kid at the front of the <laughs> studio, like trying to make a ballet. Whereas to me, you know, I, I have my, you know, I'm, I'm 27 years old now and I have just sort of like my experience to draw from at this point. And, 
I don't feel young. I feel like I'm the age that I am. And so that was kind of a shift as well to see. I was going to say Justin is the ancient age of 27 now. Um, <laughs> uh, I mean, when I was watching the movie, I was just constantly like wanting to know what is going on in his head, what is happening in there. I mean, when you have a subject who's quieter and not, you know, this is not the portrait of an artist having hissy fits in the studio. Uh, is that, for a filmmaker, is that is that a challenge in and of itself to have those quiet moments? Um, I guess it depends what you're trying to make, you know. I mean, this movie isn't for everyone, you know. It's not like high drama, like Black Swan or something. But for me, what <laughs> is really interesting is when people are so focused on what they're doing that they kind of forget that they're being watched or and they're in a room with other people. Like, I really like on the subway when something like really crazy happens and everyone looks at it, but if you watch the people who are looking at the thing, like they're not aware that they're with other people. They're so like focused on this other thing. So I think a, a lot of the movie has that in it. It's like Justin is so invested in what he's doing that he's not acting for the camera. He's just really in it. Mm -hmm. I think in the movie, something that was surprising for me is we see you working with dancers, we see you working with the ballet master on your ballets, but other than that, we don't really see a lot of institutional interference in your process. Could you maybe tell the audience here, you know, what life is like for a resident choreographer in a big company like New York City Ballet? Well, you know, I, I think New York City, what makes New York City Ballet so great uh, for choreographers coming into work is that they provide complete um, creative freedom to do what you want. So this is sort of a rare thing to find in uh, such a colossal established institution, but I think it's, um, it's a, a reason why so much good new choreography comes out of New York City Ballet. Um, so, yeah. yeah. Uh, and you've, as a dancer, worked on a lot of new works too, so I'd imagine this is sort of being like on the flip side of that for you, which is something new. Yeah, I think, you know, I, I spent maybe five years in the company as a dancer before I choreographed and um, I worked with a lot of choreographers uh, coming through and I think I learned a lot from the way that they worked and kind of took um, certain aspects from each person that I worked with and developed my own uh, way of working through that experience. So it was really kind of a training ground for me. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, as your third ballet, it seems like just the timing was right to be doing this film. Do you feel, both of you, in the end, that this was really the right ballet to be capturing this moment in Justin's life? And what moment do you feel ultimately we're seeing in the movie for his career? Um, well, I think it's a really interesting time in Justin's life because he has gotten to this place where he's choreographing for one of the best companies in the world, but he's still really new at it. So you get to see someone who's sort of like at the top of their uh, professional situation, <laughs> and uh, but they're still figuring it out. And I think at this, you know, we finished shooting the movie two years ago, and I think Justin's career is very different now than it was even then. So it's just this sort of like moment in time where he's great and doing great things, but still really new at it and figuring it out. And I think it's really great to have a record of that because I think Justin will only continue to make more work and, you know, get more important. <laughs> I mean, I, th I think it's, first of all, I want to say um, that 99% of people don't really understand what goes into the making of a ballet. And I think it's fantastic that there's now this um, really honest depiction of that process and really kind of like focused depiction of that process from start to finish and uh, we'll hopefully kind of like expose people to uh, just exactly how much goes into the making of a new ballet. Um, I think like even though it shows so much going into the making of this ballet, uh, there were still certain elements that um, were already sort of like pre-established, those being like uh, for example, the music that I worked with in this, in, for this ballet was um, an already composed piece, and, and there was no visual design for this piece. So I think like, some people might not even realize that 
if it were focused on like an alternative uh, piece or an alternative commission, it would have been even like more expansive. But I think with that said, um, it was nice to kind of like pull away and focus in on on certain specific aspects of um, uh, making a new ballet. Um, specifically with this piece, it was very much focused on the development of the uh, the costumes and the lighting and um, and coordinating those specific elements into a uh, cohesive uh, dance experience. Mm -hmm. I think that if anyone has questions, we could open this up to questions now. Hi, uh, I have a question for Justin. I'm a really big fan. I was lucky enough to see Everywhere We Go, and I, I loved it. Um, I'll be seeing your new ballet next week. And I was just wondering when you're looking at music as a backdrop for your pieces, are there any commonalities that you find in the tracks or is there something specific that strikes you as inspirational? There's usually something uh, specific that I look for when I bring someone on to collaborate on a backdrop. You know, um, for Everywhere We Go, uh, it, it was actually Sufjan Stevens' suggestion to bring on this great uh, architect sculpture, Carl Jensen, and we thought he would be perfect for that project because he works so much with um, paper design and uh, geometry, and um, there is uh, great sort of like structural shifts in that backdrop that um, were able to uh, change the setting in a very um, abstract way. Um, so it's something that we really wanted to incorporate into the piece. Um, I have a, a ballet premiering March 27th for Miami City Ballet, and that's a uh, collaboration with uh, an artist named Shepard Ferry, who's best known for kind of like his ubiquitous Obey uh, street art symbol, and he also did the Obama Hope poster. And um, for that commission, you know, I was really focused on how I could tie the piece to the community of Miami, and as I was exploring Miami as a place, I started to take note of his artwork um, all around the city and not in like a museum setting but in a much more like accessible uh, setting I would look up and there would be like a four story tall mural that he painted and um, and I just really liked that accessibility and that way that the public can kind of like connect with it and so I wanted to hopefully like have that spill over into the ballet context and so I just approached him and um, and tried to see if he would be interested in collaborating on a backdrop for that ballet, and he was interested, and so we created this kind of like, um, I guess, symbiotic experience of, you know, movement, meeting music, meeting visual design for that commission, so, yeah. Um, hello, I was curious, you mentioned earlier, during the filming process, you barely noticed that he was there. Did the dancers react the same way, or sort of how did that, work uh, behind the scenes? Um, well, I think maybe the fact that the generation of dancers was a bit younger played into that. I think um, they were all very much used to, uh, I guess, this sort of like digital age we're living in. And, um, and it wasn't the first time they had been filmed in the studio before. So I think that, um, that they were more or less comfortable with the cameras being there. And like I said before, Jody has a really kind of like quiet presence in the studio. So um, so I think people uh, didn't notice him so much. He kind of blended into the background, which was good. I would add to that that I think filming dance is in and of itself a difficult thing to do. I mean, we've all, or maybe we all haven't seen, but some of us have seen dance TV shows that focus a lot on heads and arms and you don't see whole bodies. Did you have enough experience from doing opus jazz that you were sort of used to it and knew how to approach it? Or were, what are the challenges for a filmmaker of, of filming dance? Yeah, I mean, I think well, for this documentary, you know, like um, the dance wasn't even really that important in a way. So I wasn't, you know, it's obviously it's part of the story, but it wasn't like I needed to tell the story of the choreography the way that Justin is when he when people are watching it on stage. It's more sort of like the fact that they're working on it and see, at certain times seeing a very specific thing that they're working on, but it's not about like presenting it the same way that Justin wants it presented, which Opus Jazz, the other film, 
is it's very much the story of the choreography itself. So it's a different thing, you know. It's like I wasn't really thinking about the visuals in this film very much, just sort of telling the story of what was happening. Uh, my question's for Justin. Um, why you decided to make the transition from being dancer to choreographer? Like, what was the thought process behind that? Um, I, you know, choreography was something I was interested in from a pretty young age. When I first moved to New York, I started to uh, attend performances at New York City Ballet pretty regularly, and I started to become exposed to works, especially by choreographers such as George Balanchine and Jerome Robbins. And it kind of... Uh, showed me uh, choreography as an art form and how it related to music and I felt like it was something that I wanted to explore and um, you know after a certain point I felt like I just had this itch that I couldn't get rid of and so when I was I think I was 20 years old I decided to just take the plunge and make my, my first ballet and kind of haven't stopped since then and it's been sort of a learning experience through the process of making these pieces from start to finish. So as soon as I finish one, I kind of go back and I, I start another one and um, try to do something different. No, I was just gonna say that in terms of Justin's crossover between being a dancer and a choreographer, I know you've said to me before you wouldn't want to dance in one of your pieces. Although he looks really good dancing his <laughs> pieces in the studio, I should say. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think it's, I think it's really hard to gain perspective on the work if you're dancing inside of it. Um, you know, it's a, it's a live art form, so it only ex uh, exists in the moment. It's, I think it's a little bit different to filmmaking in that you can watch playback when you're uh, creating film work. Um, uh, I think it would just be, I would be too much at a disadvantage if I tried to dance in the work that I was creating, so I prefer to just stay back in that sense. Well, great. I hope you all are able to see the movie. It's fantastic. And thanks so much for coming, everyone. Thank you. Thanks.